My role here at uh, Letterhead Fonts is the project director, and what that entails is um, each one of our contributors will send us fonts. And I keep track of each one of those contributors, make sure that they're on the right track, and um, help them complete their font on time. When a contributor sends us their, their font, we can go over whether or not uh, they're on the right track with the feel of the font, whether something is too thick or too thin. Um, oftentimes when you start working on something, um, you're kind of in a one-track mode. So multiple sets of eyes on a font will help it uh, get to where it needs to be. Well, first you've got to decide what type of font you want to do, and that usually involves um, doing a lot of research. Um, we look at quite a few different books, looking through old sign magazines, looking through um, old cigar label books. Um, it's, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, different influences out there that you can use for your research. So finding the right thing is a very important step. After that is my favorite part, which is sketching. And this is where you, you uh, hash out the feel of the font, what you want it to look like. Somewhat of the balance of the letters happen here. So that's a huge important part. We do all of our fonts by hand. And so it starts out with a simple sketch of the letter you, you'd like to do. Then from the sketch, you scan into uh, your computer and you're going to vectorize the font. I use Illustrator. You essentially are going to scan as high resolution as you can and then you're going to use Illustrator to hand trace um, the entire letter. You don't want to auto trace. It's going to look terrible if you do it that way. Um, it adds too many points and using the pen tool and doing it by hand, you have much better point placement. If you were to auto trace, it's going to put points everywhere, points where you don't need them. This is a, an important part and we try to keep all of the letters on the same line. And when you're drawing them, you can see which letters are thicker or thinner than other letters and, and that's really helpful. So when you bring your vectorized letters into FontLab, you can add side bearings, um, also known as metrics, and you can add your kerning, which is the space in between the letters, individual letters. It's kind of like um, on a microscope, you have a, a fine setting and a rough setting. Uh, I would say that the metrics, the side bearings, are your rough setting, and the kerning would be your fine setting. So metrics you do, so every letter looks good spaced with each other, and then the kerning is like the specific spacing between two individual letters. Letterhead fonts uh, are unique in that um, all of our fonts are, first of all, handmade. Each one of them is handmade by an artist, and these artists are from all over the world. Each one of our contributors is in the business. They understand letters. Uh, a few of them are sign painters. A lot of them are graphic designers. Um, and they understand what other designers are going to need. The fonts are useful. Each one of them has a purpose and can be used in a design. I'll just keep sketching the same line over and over and over again until I find a curve that I like. And then I'll erase the, the lines that I don't need. Um, leaving kind of a ghosted image of the previous lines, and that kind of helps me get a feel for the curves of the font, the roundness of the font. Um, a lot of people will use tracing paper, and I just don't. It's one more step that I don't need. A pencil and eraser is just fine. So when we bring um, our scanned letters into Illustrator, we place them on a, um, a baseline, and we look at them uh, in comparison to each other. And we do this because you want to balance out each letter. And the reason we balance out each letter is, as your eyes are crossing over a word, you don't want one specific thing to, to stand out above others. And usually if something's thick or thin, it's going to stand out immediately to your eye, and your eye is not going to flow very well through that word. So putting them all on a baseline at the same time allows you to decide your thick and thins to balance out the font you have to look at those letters compared to the other letters. There's a lot of optical illusions that go on when you're making letters, and so it's really not about getting it perfect as far as measurements. It's perfect as far as it reads to your eye. For example, the O is going to go up a little bit higher than the caps height and a little bit below the baseline. Um, we do this because it's an optical illusion. If you were to take your O and you were to put it at exactly the caps height and the baseline, 
it's going to appear smaller than the rest of the letters. And there's other letters that do this as well, um, pointed characters like the A and the bottom of the V. A typical font takes um, around a month to two months for an average font. Um, more complicated fonts can take up to six months to a couple years. Uh, Charles Borges font um, took, I think it was six years to completely finish. And that font has many, many, many glyphs. And I'm sure the reason it took him so long to do that font was balancing out every single one of those extra characters to each other character. Um, there's lots of flourishes that go into other parts of letters, and so getting that perfect takes a long time. And plus, I mean, all of our contributors have other jobs, so this is something to, they do on their free time. So most of them are sign painters, and so they've got other jobs to finish before they can actually make fonts. You do it quite a bit, actually. Um, you, you don't want to release a font that doesn't look good, so um, oftentimes we'll redraw an entire letter because it does, it's not working. Um, quite a bit of this um, editing can be done um, in the computer, but uh, if it's not working, then you, it's always good to start back from, from step one, back to the drawing board, literally. Right now what I'm doing is I'm redrawing the letter S. Um, I had previously drawn it, but um, Placing it next to the other letters, I can see that it's uh, not wide enough for one thing and doesn't balance very well with the other letters. So I'm going to redraw it, make it a little bit wider, and make it work with all the other letters. Everybody's got their favorite letters, but I guess it depends on what style of font you're doing. Because if you're doing a um, more decorative font like this, there's flourishes and, and things everywhere. And so you can have fun with each letter. Um, a lot of designers will say that their favorite letter is S, and I think it's because it's got all the curves in it. I don't know. I like. I think the most challenging letters are the wider letters, like the the W and the M. Those are difficult to do and not get too bold or too thin. So um, I guess the challenging letters are more fun to me. This font was influenced by uh, many different sources, um, primarily um, old glass signage. Um, there's a lot of influence from old stock certificates where uh, the boldness of these stock certificates kind of influence the boldness of this font. Um, cigar labels, there's lots of great cigar label lettering out there and that, that influenced quite a bit, especially the more decorative areas of the font. So I got started um, in hand lettering because I do uh, quite a few chalkboard designs for various uh, businesses. And when you're doing that, you're doing, you know, you're doing an illustration first and foremost, and that's how I got into it. Somebody asked me to draw something on a chalkboard, but you're also um, selling a product, and that involves um, hand lettering. And so I, from doing these chalkboards, started doing a lot of hand lettering. And after a while, I started to enjoy it quite a bit, and then I got into font making because of that. I enjoy making fonts um, because it uses your whole brain quite a bit. I mean, you are concentrating with both your right brain and your left brain. There's a scientific side of me that, um, that this part of font making um, fulfills. And the creative side as well. I get to draw and I get to be creative and, and then I get to see people use those fonts in their designs. It's very fulfilling.